All right, what's up? This is Educational Code Forces Round 109. Um, I'm currently purple, so this is a rated round for me. So yeah, I am looking to do, I'm hoping to do well, but we'll see. You have an infinite, no, initially empty contrin. You want to brew a potion in it. Contain exactly K percent of this and this percent of water. One step, you can either pour one liter of essence or one liter of water. Um, I can't tell what this is asking quite yet. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Okay, the percentage. It's a one to a hundred. So pretty much we want the percentage of essence is E over E plus W. We want this to be equal to K to N over a hundred. 100e is equal to ne plus nw. So it's e times 100 minus n is equal to nw. <laughs> okay, so it's like e 100 minus n is equal to times a W. So E over W equals N over a hundred minus N. Okay, so this is GCD of bullshit. So if N is equal to zero then that means n is 100. So we could just do this. Otherwise, int e is equal to n and w is equal to n. And g is equal to gcd of e and w. Right? Frick. Hold on. Um, N is equal to 3. 3 over 97. <laughs> oh. Pff, um, my bad, my bad. E equals W over G. Um, I should open up the rest of the problems. B, oh wait, six problems? Okay, we got A. Problem B, T n in a per, okay, T in a permutation. Given a permutation of n integers, so, <laughs> to sort the permutation A in ascending order. Um, in ascending order. Wait, we want to take... <laughs> okay, I believe we can do it in... Oh, we want to do a few tests. We want to check a few things. I actually... Um... This seems like a very similar problem to a C that I wrote in an official Code Forces contest, like a really long time ago. It seems very similar to that. Uh, if res is equal to two, 
I guess, hold on. So check zero. Wait, we can only choose a subarray, right? Yeah. So check prefix or suffix. Um, so if array at zero is equal to one or array at n minus one is equal to n, then we know that we can just use one move. So it's two or three. Because we know we need some prefix or suffix to be sorted. And this, and whatever this is, we can only, so like, the only time we can move the one all the way over there is if it's like this. And then otherwise if, yeah, because if it's like five and one, we would have to first create some, we would have to fix some suffix and put it in there. Okay, so if array at 0 is equal to n, and array at minus 1 is equal to 1, then we need 3 moves. Otherwise, we can get away with 2. One oh two. And let me check one more. Hold on, let me check one more. Thing. Like, what if I just do 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? 1, or like 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This needs 3 moves. I believe that's true. Because even if we sort, like... <laughs> we put, like, we sort it, or I guess rearrange. Yeah. Um, this seems like I could have an edge case that's missing, but I'll trust it for now. Move on to problem C. <laughs> there are n robots on an OX axis. One is at coordinate 0, one at coordinate m. The ith robot starts an integer coordinate x and moves either left towards a 0 or right with a speed of 1. You know, for a second. M is 10 to the 8. Whenever a robot reaches this wall, it turns around and instantly continues to ride in the opposite direction. <coughs> Whenever several robots meet at the same integer coordinate, they collide and explode into dust. This looks like <clears throat> and continue the ride. N, M, and then the direction as well as the starting coordinates. They're all distinct and they're not necessarily sorted, are they? No. I wonder 
why this is negative one. either left towards a zero or right with a speed of one unit per second. Oh, it's the same integer coordinate. Oh, okay. So it depends on the parity of their position then. Like all parodies. Parodies? Yeah, all parodies can collide with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um so the question is Okay, so we can create like parity coordinates together. And then if they like bounce like this, the yeah. Okay, I'm gonna look at problem two. Wait, why is problem is problem e easier than c? Okay, I should probably look at them. I feel like I should at least look at them, if that's the case. There are n armchairs, the number from 1 to n, from left to right, some armchairs are occupied by people, and most one per armchair, other than that. The number of occupied armchairs is not greater than n over 2. Some armchairs are occupied by people. Okay. <coughs> some reason you would like to tell people to move from their armchairs to some other ones. If the ith armchair is occupied by someone, the jth armchair is not, you can tell a person in the ith to move to the jth. Time is the absolute value of this. You may perform this operation any number of times so the operation is less done sequentially. I tell a person to move until a person can ask them to move. Okay. Every seat that was initially occupied must be free. It looks like a DP. This just looks like a DP. The question is, how would we word this DP? I do this one. Okay, how would I implement the collision mechanism for this? So once again, this sounds like a very <clears throat> I have a similar problem. Do something I've seen before. Oh, you know what this is similar to? This is similar to um this problem, I believe. Yeah. I don't know if I should get caught in this caught up in this though. Yeah, because the these in that case they still stay active. Um in this case, if they're on a parity, they're gonna collide. The point that they collide in is I 
I guess. Let me draw this. So they have a point here. There's like they have to, it has to be a left point and there is no and there's nothing in between in here. Because if there's a left inside, then that left would collide. If there was a a right inside that would collide with this. Zero. I wonder how how would we account for this? Maybe we do the range. How if we do a range? It would be hard to keep track of where that would go. So this is a chair, or I guess. Okay, so unoccupied, occupied. I guess these are occupied. Maybe okay. Is this like a standard problem or something? Like, what kind of people are solving this? Oh. Okay. So if we consider moving, wait, hold on. If we move a one to a zero like this. And we also have someone that's moving like this. Is it better to move this here than move this here? This has an over. No, that's fine. But if we have something like this, and then something like this, or I guess. Okay, so if a point is going up to here. And then there's a point that could go up to here. There's no reason for this point <clears throat> to go this way and then for that point to go up there. So if a point goes up here, even if a point goes up here and this backtracks up here, Can I process this by ranges? So if I have a one, my minimum cost to settle this is one. Minimum cost to settle this is zero. Oh wait, no, this is still one. But how would I keep track of that information? I wouldn't really be able to. 
Let's see if I can just Google this. See if I can save some time. Minimum time to. Okay. Minimum time to move occupied. Move occupied. Okay, that's no. <laughs> that doesn't look like it's actually helping at all. Okay, so we know that's like, it's likely to be some sort of this. If we turn this into a graph problem, then it's like these nodes can all go into somewhere. Go somewhere, so if we have these, this is we have like four occupied nodes. Okay, this over here has an edge of weight one. This over here has an edge of weight two. This over here has an edge of weight one, two, three, four. I guess this has an edge of weight five. Whereas this one over here has an edge of weight one, two. This is like one and like so on. Should that go to the minimum possible? <laughs> this is the same thing. And then with this, I think I'm just breaking on this right now. And
I don't have time I need to do it. Find A zero and split it up. You have these positions. Okay, um, I want to try. So, it's like draw directed. It's never optimal to have a crossing over point because if we have something that goes up like this and then something that goes down like this, if we drew the edge up here, wait, hold on, is this actually that might not be true? Um, If we want, what do we want to avoid? Well, actually, I think it is true. Let's try it. Uh, Int DP.
Okay, every move we can lose 5,000 and we can lose 5,000. They should fit in an integer. They should fit in an integer. Uh, n by n. this many one matched this n minus one thing with the beast number up here this is equal to the absolute value of zero bucket n minus one minus one bucket b so for an a is equal to n minus two we could skip one number so we need to compute smaller values before anything yeah something like this where it's like dp b is greater than zero dp at a b is equal to min of itself something like that or no like this Otherwise, we consider taking. If b plus one is less than n, dp at a at b is equal to min of itself, dp at a plus one, b plus one, plus abs, b is like at a minus one. a transition. Yeah, like we don't have to take this element. If this is like matching that we want to currently consider, we can get from like this pair, or I guess this pair, and then it would go up to this pair. So what is DP at the one? So we consider this first one. Oh, wait. 
if we iterate over the zeros that we correspond to, so this is a and this is zero, because we always want to start at, wait, I got this mixed up, hold on, I'm getting this mixed up, let's do, okay, let's do n's as ones and n's as zeros, so this should mean we do, in, yeah, we want ones by zeros, I guess, wait, hold on, that's, that's confusing. Uh, yeah, ones by zeros, and then we do, absolute value dot get, this is like the last element that we match with, so we match with any arbitrary zero. Um, ones by zeros, and so it's like, this would be, we start on the first one and we can start matching at any possible zero. No, still wrong. Um, what, uh, what is the value of dp at the first one? And then we want to consider taking it with the well, like the second one with the second zero, pretty much. Because pretty much we just ignore the first two elements. I gave three when it should be two. So o one o o one o one o o one. Wait, but that's correct. That's weird. Um, that is definitely correct. That's that's just weird. Um. Is that okay? That looks okay. Did I divide by two? Yeah. Oh, wait. That's not right. Um, <laughs> we want to... Um, Wait, is it? Wait, no, no, no. Because we can ignore, we can like take the next closest zero. So it's like if it's zero, zero, then it's like one, one. But we could also choose to ignore the zero. So we want to go from like one to two. We go one to two from one to one. Wait, yeah, that is correct. Huh? What if it was something like four? That is two. What about like six? One o one o o one. That is three. So the moment that I put something like this, oh wait, pff, hold on. Yeah, at the moment I do something like this, it gives four. That's not right. Uh, man. Just out of curiosity, what does this give? Seven. Okay, we're just... Something is kind of not right. Um...
so this is one, this is two, this is three. get overshadowed by something like this. That's bad. This is three, two, one. This one is two, three, four. This one is um one, two, three. It's like one, two, three. Wait, yeah, hold on. Three, four, five. This one is one, two, three, four. This one over here is um one, two, three. So like give them a grid. This is the, these are ones, these are all zeros. <laughs> N is equal to ones dot size, M is equal to zeros dot size, and DP is equal to this. Like I could, I guess I could kind of see how it's suboptimal. Like I mean, I wouldn't be super surprised, but I'm surprised why it's not giving a right answer. Because I feel like this, it should always at least be giving a right answer, like a, an achievable answer. I guess is a way to word it. If b is greater than zero, then dp is equal to the min of this and this. Can I print the function? If debug will print zeros and we print ones. Rayless integer. Okay. So it's one, 
Ben's not get at A. Um. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Ones, these are zeros. this wait a minute is it just maybe we ignore this but at the same time this hmm. how would this work like this would still this would still theoretically work though because zero zero should lead into one one, and then this one one case should then solve itself. Uh, yeah, I'll do the DP table. So we print zeros and ones. Okay, so this is zero, one, one, two, four, five, zero, three, six. N is equal to ones dot size. That is. So this is an N by N. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three. Okay. So two, two, zero is five. That's one, two, three, four, five. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then two, one is four. And then two, then one, right? Yeah. Okay, so dp at 1 and 0. It's like we take 1 and 0, and then we do dp. Oh, I guess it's a min of these, right? Right, because we don't have to take that value. Okay, okay. Um, hold up, hold up, hold up. So update four int b is equal to m minus two dp at a at b is equal to min of itself. Or I guess we do it up here. A plus one, A plus one, DP at A plus one, B plus one. Let's see if this is right or not. Nice. We got it. Okay. Um, that was kind of, honestly, that like wasn't super easy, but at least we were able to figure it out. All right. Now problem C, unless if E has more solves. <laughs> it, it doesn't have that many more solves. Jesus Christ. Okay. So. We made we already made a few observations in here, um, so we can we can consider 
points with the same parity um, necessary and sufficient condition for collision. Now, the only issue is um, figuring out I said for like each point. Which one is what? Are, which is the earliest point that it collides with, and when does it actually collide with that point? So it bounces around. Um, okay, so we have a point over here. And then let's say, what if this next point was up like this? Would these two ever collide? I mean, if they bounce back, then yes. But okay, if there was any point over here, obviously if it goes in that direction, it would collide first. And if it even went in this direction, it would somehow bounce back and still collide anyway. And then something similar could apply to here. Okay, so in general, we can consider these as separate cases. So like for a given set of points. I guess okay, if we consider the first I guess the first point, right? If it's going in this direction. Or if it goes in that direction. Let's just, okay. So this point goes in this direction, and this point goes in this direction. These two points are guaranteed to collide with each other. Yeah, these will definitely collide at some point. If we have something like this, these will never collide. I mean, they could collide if they, at the very end, maybe. But they would be one of the last pairs to collide, if not the last pair to collide. Um, if it's something like this, we probably need to keep going. But once we hit something like this, we could pretty much use like a stack to pair these up and throw them out. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. I think that's one way I could do this. It might be the best way I could do it. Wait, no, that's not the right problem. Um, T. <laughs> I'm gonna read it as a long. <clears throat> to stay safe um ooga booga
five six seven five seven okay okay i see i see that we care about. This is M, this is obviously res. I guess we should also Unit. Uh, I guess integer. We got these stores indices. <clears throat> is in the stack then we obviously add it to the stack otherwise what condition under what conditions do we pop and then all rights because once there's a right and a left there they will guarantee you collide with each other okay, it's like once we process two lefts they'll never collide with each other yeah so we can like pop those off and so at the very end the best we'll have is a left and then like some set of rights i 
And then we can just merge those right together and then potentially merge that left at the very end. sorted uh frick i need to sort this collections dot sort ls right because right now i'm assuming that their indices aren't increasing order but i might need to force that return long dot compare or or yes yeah, I guess enter a compare is okay. Something like array of x minus array of i. The reader's indices, we care about the actual location. Yeah. <clears throat> that got peak last. Uh, previous is equal to r. at cur is equal to L, then we int other is equal to stack dot or less. else stack dot at last at cur. <laughs> if it's L, <clears throat> oh wait, <laughs> is it just that's funny. Uh that, that at last that occur. Right, because even if it's L and R, R R is like tentative. L L will always pop. R L will always pop. Wait, will L L always pop? Yeah, okay. It does, it does. Um, and others equals stack that pull last. Oh, we need. Okay, this function could be kind of annoying. I guess if it's something like in others equals stack that pull last. Like if previous R and a current is L, then the amount of time is just the difference over two. And these differences are guaranteed to be, because they're same parity, it's guaranteed to be even. Okay, so we have res at current is equal to res at other, which is equal to array at current minus array at other over two. Yeah. Right left case, right left, yeah. Um, LL case, how do we handle this? Okay, well, we need to get this thing anyway. shift over by a and then it's like b over 2 because the same parity it's fine yeah okay so res of current is equal to res of other 
it is now equal to a plus point long a plus b minus a over two. stack.peak first equal to L, then head is going to equal to stack.pull first, RR case, um, while stack.size is greater than 2 actually. at res t1 and b is equal to res t2. Wait, I already have a and b, or what? Oh wait, not res, um, array. Did I? Nope, okay. Array. Uh, res at a, no, res at t1 is equal to res at t2, which is then equal to First diff plus a it's like diff plus long temp is equal to m minus a, which is this difference. So temp gets decreased by diff, and then this gets divided by two. And tail is equal to negative one. Then tail is equal to stack dot pole. LR case. Um let me think. If Okay, wait, no, if, um, array ahead, if the distance takes a strictly less than m minus, uh, array at tail. So this is a distance it takes to hit the wall. Then we do something else. Uh, so pretty much what we do is, um, long, about long time is equal to, we want to first move this many units, and then we do, um, I guess it's something like, what is this? Res at head. Okay. If minute head and tail is at least zero, so like if something exists, then res at head is equal to res at tail, which is then equal to array at head, right? <clears throat> Plus, that turns to zero. This will like increase by array at head. And then they go in the same direction, which is really weird. Okay, so how much time does it take to get there? So long time is equal to array at head. Long a is essentially zero. Long b is n minus array at tail, right? Plus array at head. And then it would get to um. 
And then it would get to a point where it's like, What would this point look like? It would be like if uh Ooga Booga. <laughs> if um I guess if it's R R it'll t however much distance it'll go there then divide by two. That makes sense. Um Time plus equal to m minus b. I'm going to have to tail for the ray head. So, like, it goes this distance first, and then it subtracts a difference. Yeah, and then time. A is equal to zero, which means time can essentially get divided. No, B over two. Res at res is equal to res at tail is equal to time. Oh, that was a mouthful. Um, that is quite a lot. Else, long time is equal to m minus array of tail. Long A is going to be equal to <clears throat> it's rate of head minus time. Where B is equal now B is essentially equal to M. So B is equal to M and it's going in this direction. So time plus equal to A. No. Yeah, A. And then time plus equal to. the difference. So it's like if it goes out like this, this turns around like this. Yeah, the distance itself is going to be essentially m minus a over 2. Res of head is equal to res of tail, which is now equal to time. Um, Got bugs. They have bugs. That's not good. <laughs> bugs are not good at all. Um. Fortunately, I don't think these are too hard to fix. Negative one, seven, seven, negative one. Okay, something is something weird is happening here. Um. <clears throat> Something real weird is happening. Okay, so we consider one, okay, one R, three L, consider 9R and also 11R. Wait a minute, if these points go up in this direction, Okay, so what is the first test case saying? Five. 
It's saying first collides at time five. That is not true. Um, talk to add last peak last. If the previous is equal to R, yeah, the direction of this. Uh, we okay. So we can do something boolean debug is equal to true. If debug system print on ls I get zero, ls dot get at one. These should be the locations of one and three. Yeah. Okay. Um If the stack size is equal to zero, then we just add it in. Otherwise, we get this. If debug and, okay. If debug and <coughs> cur is equal to, and cur is equal to two, Other. Other should be equal to zero. Yeah. Um, oh. Wait a minute. If debug in this. If debug in cur is equal to two. Previous is equal to R, hold on, plus a direction at curve, which should be equal to L. Why? Huh? Hold on, hold on. What's happening here? Wait a minute, I don't like that. I don't like that. Um. <clears throat> Debug system path print ln direction. What? Directions. R R. <coughs> Directions occur. Or no, direction at two. Because it only prints it if. Huh? R. Am I crazy? Wait. Am I, am I okay? Zero, one, two. What? What is, am I good? Huh, R. Huh. Why is direction at one blank? Wait, okay, my, my brain is fried right now. I don't understand how this even happened. Read in file.
Like that. <gasps> They're not. <sighs> you know, it's a good idea to read input correctly. You know, why did it? How did I? I'm speechless. I'm actually speechless. Directions at i is equal to st.next token dot car at zero. Good god. That's one okay, it's still not it's not quite correct yet, but at least <laughs> at least we read input correctly now. Wonderful. Good God. Um. What's happening here? Okay, I'm saying that nine and eleven don't collide, which is clearly not true. Good God. Um. <laughs> I still can't believe that happened. I, I wasted like a solid 10 minutes trying to debug that part. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Direction P class if previous is equal to R. Wait, is this a RR case? It is. I guess the RR case is kind of weird. Because we do an RL, which gets paired up, and then we do an RR. Uh, if debug system now don't print the length stack size. Uh, odds go first, right? Yeah. That's what debugging. Two. Okay, so it is two. Greater than or equal to two. That's why, right? Yeah, that's important. If debug, we don't need to debug anymore. Uh, okay, let me mark debug as false. All right, let's see if this works or not. I'm gonna read E while well, I'm at it. Bitmask DP maybe? That's kind of likely. As long as the test case four. Do we try to debug it? Or do we try to do E? I'm gonna think about this one a little more. Um, let's see if we have number line. If minute head and tail is great. Or yes, if it's equal to one. We'll start this whole form this, yeah. <sighs> L R <clears throat> or R R is when we wait. Thank you. 
wait, hold on. Is this? This is not correct. This is supposed to be um. Raya tail. Yeah. <clears throat> That was supposed to be a ray of tail. <clears throat> and then from there, it's just a is equal to zero. It's this. We bounce back, so it's like both are headed right. So it's like how much distance there, and we can divide by this difference. As for this, they go out like this. This heads over here earlier. So a is over here. They face this way. We go to a, and then it's like whatever this difference was. Okay, um, okay, we've got C. I wonder how many tests there are, but yeah, it's a good problem. So, um, <clears throat> Monocarp is playing a game called something, I don't know. Great in part. <clears throat> okay, n cities, n is less than or equal to 20. Number of points is kind of large. In order to conquer new lands, you plan to build one monument in each city. One monument in each city. What does that even mean? I don't know what that means. Shoot, my computer is almost out of battery. Okay, that's a little better. The game is turn-based, and um, this monocarp is still amateur. He built exactly one monument per turn. Okay. One monument each city. <clears throat> For each point, he knows the distance between it and each city. For each point, he knows the distance between it. Okay. When built in some city, mono monument controls all points most distance one to the city. You will choose a city or monument and randomly among all remaining cities. Monocarp will have how many points he will conquer at the end of the turn end. this okay, we have this um oh when a monument is built in the city a monument will capture those numbers.
Um, I guess there are ways we can do it for. We can do it always for this. Does that make sense? I guess. I guess it does. Just curious. What is my delta? Okay, it's not too bad. That's not bad. Um. Grid. I guess it's not too hard to tell when a point. I guess it's hard to tell when a point is already taken or not. Yeah. Because the problem is, is that even if we know like what subset of numbers we've taken already, or like what subset of cities, that doesn't mean we know which monuments have been taken or not. Like that's not something we can keep track of easily. Maybe it's more like intersection, right? Where it's like, um, or not intersections, but like, or you sets of cities. <clears throat> like if we took a city at like this time, then like eventually we'll cover this set of cities. And then we can like go through all of those then figure out oh we could probably do PIE right maybe where it's like for this subset we need to subtract right so out for so like for a sub for a subset we need to consider overlap Yes, like how many cities are covered by one or more, two or more, three or more, four or more, so on. Uh. <clears throat>
Yeah, and so then it would be like Yeah, I mean I know how PIE works. Number of ways we can do this, number of ways we can do that. <clears throat> Hmm. Okay. Okay, so every subset would be like Yeah, for every subset we would count that and then <sighs> we can use that to count how many number of points are covered by. How does this help us? This helps us for that, right? If you want to know how long all of these stays. Yeah, number of points are covered by at least one city. Minus this, like, number of points are covered by... Yeah. 
yeah, number of cities, like with these points. This will, using PIU and that will return um, how many cities are covered. No, how many points are covered by a city, pretty much. And if we know that, then it's pretty straightforward. But how do we calculate this efficiently? Let's see, a two second time limit, 256 memory. Um, how fast were solutions? Fairly fast, honestly. So if we were to include a subset, I guess, can we like just iterate over all masks maybe? Like with some pre-computation. Yeah, like we have, I guess, each, like, point has a set of cities that it will definitely cover. I'm not too sure how to do this. Earlier we take a point, the more points that city can cover. Um, This is city, city, city. Point, 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 point. Yeah, I don't think this is a, this is not, I don't think, the thing about this is that I still, I still can't really keep track of which intervals have been covered, or like which cities have been, have, are already like taken and which ones are still available. Uh... Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't think I'm getting this in 12 minutes. Um, that's fine. It just... Maybe just I guess to what it is like. Spend a little bit of time looking at C and D just to make sure I didn't just make sure I'm not like forgetting anything or like I missed anything. Ten to the eight. Ten to eight is fine. Okay, um here's what I'm gonna do. For problem D, because this is an educational round, I'm gonna use longs over here. Static long Long.max value long. Also going to clean up this code a lot. Then I can get rid of this debug statement. I can get rid of this debug statement. And that's pretty much it. Um because this isn't yeah. Because the thing about educational rounds is that you don't actually lose penalty you don't actually like lose penalty for making extra submissions. So I'm doing this just to like be stay safe in case if this somehow long overflows. Then at least I have a submission that works on that. I'll do something similar for problem C where I'll get rid of my debug statement, which apparently I didn't have any. Interesting. Um, Time plus, okay, time add this. I don't think there's any way to break the overflow for here. So probably this is like a little more comfortable, but, um, okay, I this method was wrong last time. I'm just gonna try a few things. Yeah, like this should be wrong, I think. Yeah, this is the wrong answer to test case one. Um, <sighs> at last, pull last. If nothing is in here, uh, if this must win all multiple R's and while there's two of them that exist, we get rid of both of them. If stack that size is equal to one, then it's this. If... Okay. If rated head is less than or equal to this, we do this. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't, I don't think there's a way I can try to break that, honestly. It's fine. This is fine the way it is. 
What else? Okay, problem B. I want to look at this one. Because this, this feels like a problem where it could have a lot of hacks. Let me make sure I just work through all of these cases. Okay, so... If it's an identity permutation, obviously zero moves. Otherwise, <clears throat> if this value is equal to one or this value is equal to n, or like generally, if there's like a prefix or a suffix that's already sorted, we can just like treat it as its own thing. Yeah. We can like, because we can rearrange an alien movie once, but we can't apply it to a whole array. Yep, okay, so this is just always one. And if this is n and this is one, because if we think about what the final move is, either one has to be in the first position already, or n has to be in the last position already. So we have to get to a state where one of these are, are true. The only way we can get 1 to n is if it's not on the first, it's not on the last position. Because otherwise we need to include the whole array. Same thing for n. So if, as long as one of these is not true, we can use one move to get that to the end and then just sort it. Otherwise we would need pretty much, we would essentially need like two moves to disrupt it. Okay, I think b is okay. I want to say B is okay. A. Can N be 100? Um, K is less than equal to 100. Or I guess, no, can it be 0? Is what I should ask. It can't. It cannot be 0. Okay. But it could be 100. 100 is obviously just 1. Um, yeah, I feel like A should probably be fine. Especially given how there's literally only a hundred possible inputs. If I didn't have a test that was just all those hundred inputs, then my god, that would have been aw that would be awful. But yeah, I think this is my contest. Um I'm gonna end the screencast here. So yeah. I know it's been a while since I uploaded, but I hope you enjoyed watching this. Hopefully I don't get hacked because it's an educational round. It's a little iffy, but hope you had fun.